Andrew H here and welcome to another episode of Subtract Reactions where we subtract the bullshit give you guys honest reactions. So I asked for some requests from you guys, the subscribers and pretty much everybody that's watching my fucking videos. So I literally went on YouTube and typed in the word creepy and uh, I found a video here that kind of sparked my interest. It's called Top 5 Creepy Facts About Cults from WatchMojo.com. Now I've seen a few WatchMojo videos in the past here and there and I do think that they are pretty entertaining. Uh, not to mention I'm also subscribed to The Real Rejects and Greg Albo is known for watching some WatchMojo videos. But yeah guys, y'all wanted some creepy stuff so uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Top 5 Creepy Facts About Cults. Oh fuck. Group meetings can sometimes be a productive process. But there are some groups out there with some sinister ulterior motives. Everything was in the name of God, which just justified everything. He thought it was like God's will for them to send videotapes of themselves dancing. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 what? Facts. Today we're counting down the five most fascinating, surprising, and frightening facts Is about James the world going to be on here? Which can loosely be described as a political or religious organization whose beliefs or practices are largely considered by the populace to be strange, deviant, or dangerous. He was clearly an antisocial personality. Uh, he was superficial, he was glib, and he was very adaptable. And when I got out, all your children would come to me because they never had anybody tell them the truth. Number five, cults often have one charismatic leader. Is he the son of God? I hope he is. A confident person with a radical political or religious idea can appear to be quite attractive and even revolutionary to someone who's searching for a place to belong. And cult founders know this. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader. This is oh my God. Greed, no! The lonely, angry, and disenfranchised. People are extraordinarily vulnerable to um, being recruited by one of these people or one of these organizations during uh, long, uh, times of their life where they're in crisis. Add in a propensity for deceit and manipulation, plus a thirst for power, and it becomes easy to imagine how a group of individuals who feel outcast from society That's fucking could crazy. then find themselves enthralled by a powerful and opportunistic leader. When I stand on the mountain and I say, do it, it gets done. If it don't get done, then I'll move on it. And that's the last thing in the world you want me to do. Number four, cult leaders often use sex to control devotees. If the members of a cult believe that their leader is absolutely infallible, it goes without saying that an unscrupulous cult leader could then parlay that belief into just about anything they desire. Sex was the thing that um, drove people. They didn't do any drugs, no alcohol. So sex was kind of the, the way to freedom. Cases in point, the news reports that Branch Davidian leader David Koresh held multiple wives when overseeing his Waco compound during the early 90s, or the reports that Charles Manson's hippie followers were ordered into drug-fueled orgies with each other. Whoa. That night... Um, we slept together, and I felt really loved by him, almost immediately. In Koresh's case, however, the impregnation of cult members by the cult leader made it even more difficult for scared mothers to escape from uh, the harm coming to their children. Number three, that's so terrible. don't let their members leave. Which just reinforced the indoctrination that Satan was in the world, that Satan works to the ones you love the most. Cults will do everything in their power to retain all their members. After all, if any of them left and spoke out against the cult in the media, this could make it more difficult for the leaders to maintain their power. You have, like, deeply ingrained in you, like, to not trust anyone else. For this reason, cults often collect all the damaging personal information they can about their members to use as blackmail should the need arise. Wow. Some cults may resort to physical violence, harassment, or smear campaigns in order to achieve vengeance or otherwise stop a member attempting to leave. We know and I can leave anytime I want, but I choose not to. I choose to stay here. It can take prospective escapees months of careful, secretive planning to facilitate the first steps of severing ties from a cult. It wasn't just like one day we were in and one day we were out, you know. It, it took some time for us to like slowly break away. Number two, cultists are often brainwashed. What, in the moment, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was... You really thought you were doing I did, right. I did, I honestly did. It takes more than just an idea and a this smile is so for fucked a up, cult man. leader to transition from outcast to supreme ruler. Sadly, many former cult members have reported rampant instances of brainwashing and indoctrination tactics. 
so much so that the victims of these tactics often have little to no memory about their lives prior to joining the cult. An example of these tactics include isolation, restraint, and bombarding them with visual or audio stimuli according to the cult's wishes. There are also less physical, though equally effective methods of brainwashing, which could include misleading media, verbal debasement, or aggressive rhetoric. He gave a lecture about how God had made the exorcist movie. And this movie was a prophecy of what would happen to you if you left the Unification Church. Number one, cultists can be deprogrammed. And the good news is it's reversible. It's a man-made mental illness. Thankfully, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There have been countless reports of former cult members who've managed to escape the pervasive influence of their group and have gone on to lead healthy and successful lives. That's what I was taught to believe, and, and I believed it when I was there, and then I got to an age where I started questioning some things, and then I just got to a point where I ended up leaving. The practice of forcing wow. someone to abandon a certain set of beliefs, also known as deprogramming, can be a slippery That's a good slope, ass however, movie. usually because it tends to involve the physical removal, which is to say kidnapping, of the intended target. An example of some of these techniques was the Backing Control Center, which deprogrammed fans of punk rock and heavy metal during the 1980s and allegedly reprogrammed them with fundamentalist Christian beliefs. Nowadays, deprogramming has largely been replaced by a kinder, more passive strategy of exit counseling. But empowering people of how, how to detect, you know, legitimate, healthy uh, individuals and groups and unhealthy ones. So what do you think? Are you fascinated by the world of cults? Yes. Are you glad your parents didn't send you to be deprogrammed of your musical tastes? For more obsessive top tens and eye-opening top fives, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. When a promise has been made here, there is no turning back. Oh my god. Oh man. That's so fucking crazy, man. How do people do it? Ugh! Oh man, how do people do it? How do people join a cult like willingly and knowingly? I understand if you're in a hard time in your life, but a lot of cults out there are like extremists. When you do research into them and we really start like seeing like the things that they did to each other or the things that they did to the public, it's, it's so fucking, oh my God, it's so fucking crazy. Like imagine a cult out there where people join and then everybody's trying to get the fuck out of this cult, but no one knows how to because they're afraid that their other cult members, you know, will kill them or, you know, rat them out. But really, those cult members are trying to get out too. Imagine a cult like that. Oh my God, everybody's just like afraid of each other and shit, but nobody says anything. Oh my God, man, that's fucking crazy. I'm gonna tell you how I fucking feel right now. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. I know I'm a nerd. You can fucking call me a nerd if you want. Here's my fucking TARDIS right here, guys. The fucking TARDIS! But recently there was an episode where the 12th Doctor, Missy, and Clara, they all kind of come to this realization. And it's really fucked up how they do it. Like, the Missy fucks with the Doctor and she fucks with Clara. But they come to this realization that the Daleks are being forced to do these crazy, terrible atrocities. Because, you know, Daleks aren't actually robotic. They're like these, like, fucking pink... Blob. They look like rejects off of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But the way the Daleks are hooked up into their bodies, it's like every emotional or physical action that is an act of defiance against the way they're supposed to be thinking, it automatically elicts a negative physical response. So every time they're screaming exterminate and they're shooting and shit like that, they're not actually saying that shit. They're trying to like fucking get out. They're trying to just get out of this fucking body that they're enclosed in. I'm telling you, the first time I fucking saw that, my mind was just, Pyaw! you mean to tell me that these fucking evil beings, like since the very first fucking season of Doctor Who back in the 1960s, these fucking evil motherfuckers are actually good? Oh my God. Like I wish I had done a reaction to that episode because I was flipping the fuck out. I was like, no fucking way. Oh my God. I had to pause the episode and just like geek out for a couple minutes. I was like, oh man, what the fuck? That means this and this means that. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> That's usually what happens with Doctor Who. That's why you gotta fucking watch Doctor Who because Doctor Who results in a lot of fucking nerdgasms. A lot of nerdgasms, guys. <laughs>
Sorry, I tend to go on a lot of tangents. But yeah, man, that was a good video. Very eye-opening, very fucking creepy. It's like watching the news and then you see that one story that's just like so fucked up or so creepy and you just always think, you know, shit like that really can't happen out there in the world. You know what I mean? Like, there's not fuck. That doesn't actually happen. You know what I mean? But it does. It's fucked up, man. And shit like this exists and it's fucking scary. It's a crazy ass world we live in, man. This is why we need superheroes. I fucking, oh my God. If the Justice League was real, if the Avengers was real, do you think shit like this would be happening? Oh man. Then again, what if the Justice League is a cult? Oh fuck man, ah, oh, conspiracy. Illuminati confirmed, oh shit. Look at that, oh fuck, oh, oh, oh fuck, oh. I'm sorry guys, I'm fucking weird right now. But as always, if you like my reaction, then be sure to like and share this video for me. And if you're gonna do all that, then how about you leave a comment to tell me what to react to in the future. And if you're gonna do all that, then how about you hit that subscribe button and join the family, guys. But I'll talk to y'all later, man. And uh, yeah, more reactions are coming soon. And uh, we'll see what happens. But I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace!